CVFM. Bernie Does the Borough, proudly sponsored by Teesside's Healthy Living Pharmacies. There's always a pharmacy open near you seven days a week. Ask your local pharmacist for free and confidential advice on smoking, alcohol, weight and sexual health issues. You don't even need an appointment. Visit TeessidePharmacy.net to find out more. Get your opinions on the air and have your say on the borough game. Bernie Does the Borough on CVFM. It's late into the night and the game has finally finished. The scores are set and now it's time to hear from the North East's football mouthpiece. It's time for the alternative radio phone-in. 90 minutes of spleen venting, honest opinion calls. Get involved with the biased banter by calling 01642 688 104. It's time for Bernie Does the Borough on CVFM. Welcome to the Borough here on CBFM 104.5. Tonight ended uh, Derby County 0, Middlesbrough 1. A goal from Patrick Banford in the 64th minute when he coolly rounded the goal kicker. Not on late Saturday, but more on a cute angle. Great finish from him. Uh, dissecting the game, looking at the first half. Uh, we were well drilled defensively. They were probably better than the eye without really troubling us. Um, and into the first half there was a great effort from Patrick Boston. I don't know if you've seen it or you've heard about it but the balls came to him he's about good 35 yards out he's middle of the goal he's hit it over the advancing goal kicker the kicker's away off his line he's beat the keeper the keeper's beaten to the world and it clipped the right hand post or the keeper's right hand post to our left uh, it would have been a great finish but it wasn't to be we kept plugging away uh, and as the game rolled on we really looked the business and uh, we got the all-important goal. So as it stands now, uh, Watford, I'm just looking at the tables, Watford 78 points, Middlesbrough, uh, sorry, can we, can we move that? That's no points, it cannot be points. <laughs> yeah, 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 let's get the point, yeah. Um, 72, Middlesbrough 72, Bournemouth 70, Norwich in 67, Derby 67 and Brentford 65. Uh, Ipswich we beat Saturday, still lying 7th. So, um, you know, and we'll get Bournemouth on Saturday. Leading into Saturday's game, we're saying that the next three games are crucial. It'll be the telltale as to where we're going. Uh, four goals on Saturday. Convincing second half. A great victory. And tonight, going to Derby, no mean feat. I mean, they've not won for five games. And it was important that we went there and actually won the game to take his, set us up lovely for the Bournemouth game on Saturday. Um so if you want to get involved there, you've used 104 give us a phone, discuss Middlesbrough, discuss the table. Uh, looking at the game before we go to the first corner, Blackburn 2, Brentford 3, Blackpool 0, Charlton 3, Cardiff 1-1 one, one against Bournemouth. We know about Derby, of course, Middlesbrough 1-1-0, one, one, oh, Patrick Bamford, 64 minutes. Huddersfield 2-2 two, two against Norwich, I heard that with some ending. Ipswich Town 1, Bolton 0, Millwall 0-0 nil, nil against Brenton Hove Albion. Wigan 0, Watford 2, Watford still doing very well. Uh, Will 3, Sheffield Wednesday 0, and the Reading Birmingham game was postponed. Uh, let's go to Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, hi, Bernie. Bob, I'm delighted yeah, um, you've got your phone another fixed. Great, another great victory, and uh, down to Bamford again. It, yeah. It's interesting that but I think um, there's been some good results tonight for, for Middlesbrough. I mean, obviously, Derby were going to lose if Middlesbrough won, but uh, with Bournemouth dropping a couple of points, yeah. that was excellent. Yes. And uh, I think, but more importantly, was the Blackburn 2, Brentford 3 result. Yes. Because if they decide that they're not going to beat Liverpool, mm -hmm. if they were so defeated as that, then they may cons well, consider uh, le letting um, Steve Agnew's nephew out. Jordan Rhodes. Jordan Rhodes, On yeah. after all. Right. My, 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 still, my problem with that, of course, that FA Cup game with Liverpool, the replay isn't until after the deadline is over. Right. And, and so they would be rather silly to risk, because if in the meanwhile either Gested or, well, if Gested in particular was injured, they'd, they'd be very fragile up front. I mean, they've got very good wide men in Taylor and Conway, but they're going to want to keep him, I think, while they're still in with a chance of reaching the... The FA Cup final. Yeah. Um, but, but, but I think I think what's proven tonight is that if you've got a really strong spine to a team, which is always said, 
uh, you've got a chance of, of you're going to be in the running for promotion. Yeah, for obviously we'd get would get back tonight. We always experience. We know he's a class yeah. act when fit. The two central midfielders and Bamford playing in his favourite well, position. Especially, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of Clayton. I think he gives too many free kicks away. Yeah, right. uh, he lacks mobility, and and I see. I would play Forshaw with Leadbitter. Yeah, but Forshaw come off the bench second half. But, yeah, but, but Bamford is a is is just a total class act. And the important thing is that, 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 in a sense, they've had him all season to score goals, and he's really proving his worth at the moment. When nobody else can score, he's getting them. But, Bob, I, I, um, I believe Bamford, I mean, I think he's done brilliant. Well, we all know he's done brilliant. He's got the credentials mm. recently to show that. But I believe he'd have had more goals if he didn't play so much on the right side. Well, absolutely. I mean, you could, uh, even in the cup game, he was really virtually acting as a second right back, wasn't mm -hmm. he, against yeah. Arsenal? Yes, of course. Um, was, yeah. And it, it is a worst. He should, you know, somebody as good as that, I'm sorry, you should always play in his best position. I, I agree um, with that. You know, and, and Derby missed out on promotion last year by not playing him in the final and only bringing him on for a few minutes. And it was mm -hmm. a big, big mistake. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, whatever happens, because it's now down to the, the top two will be from the top four now. Is that what you believe? No, Derby, Derby no longer have a chance, in my opinion, because their form is not that they can. They can't suddenly turn around that round and win. They probably need now to win six out of eight, and they're not going to do that. Well, the strikers um, are injured, aren't they? The key men up front are injured, and, and McLaren sort of well, beating that right. the excuse. That's I, right. Can I just say, Bob, I had to, I had to laugh at uh, Steve McLaren's uh, quotes after the game. He came out and used mm. these famous quote. Uh, despite the defeat, Derby were magnificent. That, but he says it twice. Ah. I heard his interview. I nearly crashed the car. Uh, but that's right. his usual quote. Despite the defeat, he's still using the word magnificent. Well, it, it does tend to be the way he talks about things. I know he did that when he was at Trenta, and even when he was in Germany, when things were going badly and they were losing virtually every game, when he was at Wolfsburg, for the one season that nearly saw them relegated, mm. he was always talking about, well, we were the better team, and, and uh, I, I, I think now that uh, Karanka is the first realist Middlesbrough have had for quite a while as a manager, mm -hmm. um, and I think when you've got a realist, it means that you know he won't allow for a drop in standards. No, uh, no. And I think Steve McLaren has been has always been a bit suspect in that regard. He certainly was suspect at England, and all right, so he did well at Middlesbrough, but but uh, and he had one good season at Twenty, but that's it. But I think the managers of the top four. Uh, well, it, it's a bit early in a sense to, to yeah. talk about Alex Neil because he's only had 24 months as a manager in total. Mm -hmm. But the old he's got off to a great start. But I certainly think Jokanovic, uh, Karanka and, and at Bournemouth, more importantly, I mean, I think Eddie Howe is a fantastic manager as well. And interestingly, when you, when you had that Freudian slip and you said Watford on 78, yeah. it's, a, it's a good job, mind you, that it's not about goals because Middlesbrough would be down in six. That's right, it was the if, goals that caught my yeah. goals, but, yeah. uh, but at the same time, they've now, their, their goal difference is getting much closer, but mm -hmm. uh, not that that matters anymore. But I, I, I still think it's going to go... It, to the wire. That, that top four, well, it'll go to the wire virtually. Mm -hmm. uh, my suspicion still is that Derby will be in the playoffs playing probably Middlesbrough if Middlesbrough don't cement one of the top two. Right. I feel on the feeling that Watford and Bournemouth are the two to, to stop. Right. Well, were you surprised that uh, Tomlin, and you Tomlin was in the team, everybody was yeah. suspecting Bamford to be on the right, but Tomlin played in the left. Were you that's surprised right. at that? Well, I think I think that's actually where Tomlin is best, uh, in, a, in a sort of centre-left in the hole in centre left. My only problem with Tomlin sometimes is if you play him there, there's there's then no second striker, but I'm still not convinced by either Boston or Kike. Uh, right. and they're certainly not as good as Bamford and Bamford's extra pace does allow for someone like Tomlin to make the breakthrough as well. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a probably a, the best combination he can have with those two. Right. Uh, my my big problem with Tomlin is sometimes that he although this season he hasn't seen red at all. And he he does tend to have a bit of a problem with his with his weight, I think. Uh, but, but that's that's. Hey, yeah, but Billy Coons, he, he lost a, a stone and a half <laughs> since Karanka's come in. He's he's strict orders, and I think he's lost a stone and a half. Very good. He's lost Very a bit of timber. Yeah. That, again, that's that's uh, uh, some of these foreign managers are much better on that, and they sort of mm. you know they they get a dietitian involved quite often and say, right, this is the kind of thing you're going to eat. I know Arsene Wenger was the first to do that twenty years ago, right. when he said there's not going to be any of this drinking on a uh, on any night particularly, and and you're going to have proper food. 
mm-hmm. um, and then more of a Mediterranean diet so that you can, um, you know, you can perform better, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I think, uh, I think Karanka is, is certainly going about being one of Middlesbrough's best ever managers. Well, at the minute, uh, he, the minute if he gets his promotion, then he's, he's one yeah. of the best, but hey, come on, the, the best is actually Steve McLaren. He won that elusive trophy, first he one did, in 128 did, yeah. years, Bob. Uh, yeah, you can't just yeah. dismiss that I, I European I mean, I final. Don't, I don't think it's about one trophy. Uh, I think there's a number of very good managers in the 50s as well. And, and uh, Yeah, Jack uh, Chan, of I, course. I, you yeah. know, I certainly don't think you played under anywhere near the best. Uh, I think you played under one of the worst, personally. But, 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 uh, hey, hey, hey uh, Bob, I, can, I, can I just correct you? One of the best yeah. for me was Bruce yeah. Rear. Limited budget, no money, oh, no, no, no. I'm not liquidation. I'm Lenny, Lawrence. Oh, for the, don't, no, don't swear. Don't a, swear. Don't use yeah. Lenny's name. I don't want you to talk about him. No, no, no. <laughs> um, Bob, what about the goal scoring <laughs> chats? I'm looking here. Patrick I Bamford. Still, I think it's still good, but I think, I right. think, uh, I, mean, I, I think it's Middlesbrough, after the last couple of seasons, I think if they finish in the top six, it'll be marvellous. And, and I think the important thing is if they do finish third or fourth or fifth, mm-hmm that they will be the team in the kind of form to go through and win it. I don't see Derby in the playoffs getting to the final this time. You don't. Um, the, the side to worry about most that would be in the playoffs, I think, is going to be Wolves. Wolves, yeah. Uh, you know, and I think the signing of the Forby late on has been terrific. Plus, their, mm-hmm. their defence has been excellent recently. Um, it's going to be very tight all the way through. I, I was going to say as well, tonight, Hartlepool had a great result, winning at Oxford. But then, unfortunately, so did Tranmere and Carlisle and just about every club immediately above them, apart from York. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's still going to be difficult for them. But it, this is what's so great about football in this country, that you can't take anything for granted. Nope. And, the quali- and, and the quality of football remains undiminished right till the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I think quite often the only bad games are the fir- first leg of the playoffs, which are often a big disappointment. But... Uh, I, I don't know. I still think Middlesbrough, are, you know, are, are slightly charmed at the moment that they're playing teams that are, that are, you know, without proper strikers. But at the same time, they're playing terribly well, and Bamford is yeah. on fire. Bob, say, and say, I just, say, I just play. He gets a chance to play the full game in the England Germany match. Well, I don't give a damn about that. I'm no English, as you know, Bob. Uh, but you're talking about lack of strikers. Saturday, Bournemouth get strikers. They score loads of goals. We'll have they to do. get the best. Yeah. I mean, they're only one ahead of Watford now because they, they haven't been scoring as frequently, but I still think Bournemouth and Watford will finish up very close to 100 goals in the league season. That's and um, yeah. I, my, my feeling is that, that uh, I mean, Harry Arter scored today. The good thing is, if the strikers don't score, then you'll get goals from Arter and Ritchie mm. in midfield. Right. Um, and, and they, you know, they're very consistent. They've got, they've got three guys now on more than 15. Yeah. And, uh, they, they, they're a very hard team to beat, uh, and they just they play great football, and that could be the downfall if Middlesbrough set set out to play in a certain way, and let let Bournemouth come on to them. They, then Bamford could do damage on the break. Yeah, Bob. Anything yeah. else before you go? I know you'll be getting your nightcap before you go to Kip. I, I just have to say how unfortunate it was uh, that, that Arsenal have given the best display in Europe this season tonight. I never seen it. Tell us about it, Bob. Quickly, tell us about it. Sorry? Tell us about it. I've never seen it go on. Well, oh no, well, they, they, they ran it from start to finish. They, they scored. Um, I, I mean, they, they played a slightly surprising team because Ramsey was on the bench. Mm-hmm. But uh, Coquelin was, was immense in midfield and, right. uh, and they were great at the back this time, unlike in the first leg. But the main, the main thing was that right from the start, they pressed and didn't allow the, the Monaco team much time. Monaco, of course, uh, uh, haven't conceded three at home for six years. Wow. And, and, and it was a hard task for Arsenal because if they had won 3-0, mm-hmm. it would have been the biggest scoreline overcome in the European, well, in, in a European competition of a quarterfinal for 30 years. Wow. 35, sorry, since 1969. Right. So when they nearly scored at the end, they hit the post in the last few minutes and right. then had one clear off the line when unfortunately uh, Giroud put his foot up for when he should have left uh, it to be a free header from... Mm-hmm. Uh, from I can't remember who, but but Arsenal no were very very unlucky tonight. And the great thing is that despite going out, people will have to say that you know they, they're still fighting spirit in a in a team in Britain, even if it's mainly made up of foreigners. Okay, Bob. Thank very much yeah. for your call. Great talk. Always you. a pleasure. Yeah. Never a chore. Thank you very much, Bob. If you're wondering um, where's your suit, you know what you're doing, you're scruffy. 
I've been uh, coaching today, uh, I've been out all day, I was actually in Harrogate, seeing the Harrogate Hound, the guy at Bandy, I hopefully phones tonight, and the fun bit was, we're watching the game in Dodgy TV, and his son, I was kicking the ball against the wall, and the neighbour, typical Harriet, came up, knocked on the door, complained, says, could you stop the noise? Welcome to Harrogate. Um, anyway, top of the league, Watford, Middlesbrough, and then Bournemouth, and we play Bournemouth this coming Saturday, and then... We look forward to it. Uh, 01642-688-104. Give us a phone. I think I'll get please. Your local station for Middlesbrough. CVFM. Bernie Does the Borough. Proudly sponsored by Teesside's Healthy Living Pharmacies. There's always a pharmacy open near you seven days a week. Ask your local pharmacists for free and confidential advice on smoking, alcohol, weight and sexual health issues. You don't even need an appointment. Visit TeessidePharmacy.net to find out more. Have your say on the match. Unedited. Bernie Does the Borough on CVFM. And if you want to get involved, there you have it's always six four two six double eight one and four. Just excuse me, my earplugs are upside down, back to front. But who cares? Um, we're going to go to Frank. Hiya, Frank. Hiya, Benny. Hiya, Frank. Come on in, Frank. I've got hey, earplugs in here. You wasn't it? You what? That was a good result tonight, wasn't it? I mean, that's you know, it's it, it's put the mic back into the into that lead again, hasn't it? I have to say, Frank, you know, the message is being sent out to all the other teams, you know, around them that yeah. the mean and business have got themselves over that little split they've had yeah. by the looks of it. Yeah, uh, tonight is a great result. Tonight's a great result. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's always going to be tonight, tough. You know, the, the you know the, the the other teams around them. I mean, Derby County was certainly would have wanted the three points tonight, Without a doubt. and it's 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 put their their chances of going up now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, made, made it difficult for them. Yes. But I mean, no, it was a, it was a great result away from home. It go, going through the derby and getting that. And apparently, the defence was outstanding tonight. The defence was solid. You know, they they soaked up the pressure. Um, obviously, when Wood gets in there, that there is a sort of a calmness that maybe is missing when he's not in. I think that's his experience, isn't it? Yes, his experience and his class. You know, he's got that in abundance. Yeah. And, and nobody yeah, can yeah. deny that. Uh, and we know he's a great player. When he plays, he's top man. He's classy. Uh, obviously, he's been disrupted last few years with injuries. But t- Saturday and today, he's been a difference for me defensively. He's calmed everything down, yeah. uh, and he controls everything. And it, and it, he sort yeah. of leads by example, Frank. Because yeah. he's such a class. Well, what you'd expect him to do with the level of you know what he's played at course, over the years. Course. The experience he's got, his ideal man yeah. to be able to put into these situations, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. the dressing room and on the pitch. Yeah. And I, I think the players themselves, uh, uh, you know, like, like him around, you know, they know he's got that touch of class about him. Yeah, so, he has. yeah I mean, it, you, you can't knock him on these results now, Bernie. I mean, it's going to be a tough one again with, with Bournemouth. They're all tough now, Frank. And uh, there's some tough games in April, mind. It's not, it, it, it isn't a foregone conclusion, but if they can go out there and they, they can. They can do what they did tonight. These teams around them are going to have to start looking at the borough again and thinking, oh, they're getting back on block again. Yeah, Frank, you know? the last two so, games were billed as big games and they were big games. Five goals, one conceded, six points on the board and we go to Bournemouth yeah. Saturday. You know, and, and it obviously can easily change, but I think we've got this... Of course. Karanka's obviously... It's, it's, up to, it's up to the borough now. I mean, it, it is theirs to lose. It's theirs mm. to win. Mm-hmm. You know, but I mean... We want them confident. We don't want them being careless. They'll not be cocky. But, I mean, they'll they'll not be careless. They're going out there now and, uh, you know, feel that the title's there for taking. You know, mm. if they put it, get everything right. It, it, they don't want any sort of slackers. They don't want any no. uh, overconfidence. They don't want any, you know, not turning up for the game. There's, what, five, six games to go now? Seven but, but, games? Yes. And they've really got to put themselves into it, you know. And, uh, yeah, tremendous result. But when, you, tremendous when, you result hear, when you hear the manager... Or the players getting interviewed, you can tell their feet's all firm on the ground, Frank. They're not going yeah. overboard. There's no big time Charlie attitude. They're really down to earth lads. And Karank has groomed them like that. That's the way he wants them. Yeah. He wants them out there to be big egos against opposition. But, you know, in front of cameras and off the park and with the fans, he just wants yeah. everybody the same level. Um, yeah. And he, obviously, he's doing a great job. And uh, I like him. He's. Hey, with 10 games to go, he, he's now looking 
well, obviously there was ten games ago, but I think he's looking to play Bamford up top now. I, I'll be shocked and and horrified if Bamford doesn't you, play you know, the remaining games. You, up there. I was going to ask you the question, but you, you answered it when you were talking to Bob. I was going to say, do you not think he's been wasted sometime this season? Oh, so, and he basically said he's been out on the wing and he hasn't been able to. You know, score the goals he could have got. Frank, without uh, answered the question, really. Wait, wait, without a doubt, in my my own experience and opinion, is um, Bamford would get more, would have had more goals. He's got sixteen. He's credit and well done, and he's he's target. And I know his target is twenty, um, and I think he can achieve that. You know, he's, he's scored yeah. three in the last two games. There's no reason why he can't yeah. get another four. But he would have scored more goals if he was up middle, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, he's a confident sure. kid. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's been a lot asking of him to play, play more wise. Um, Mary Crank has learned his lesson as well now. You know, he's got to play them in the right positions, you know. And at this time of the season, he's, uh, he's maybe got a goal scorer there who can yeah. uh, sort it out. That was a good goal against Ipswich. Great goal in tonight again. He's cool, he's composed, he's rounded the keeper, he's a bit of an angle. And Saturday's two yeah. goals, a lot of time to think about it. You know, the first one, he's rounded the keeper, the next one, he picked his spot across the kit in the left hand corner. So he, he showed that maturity, if you like. Where he's cool, and he's composed. What, 21, 22? 21? You know, he's. 20, he's 21 or 22, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, I think he's 21. And that, you know, he's. 21. He's obviously. Hey, there you go. He's got years ahead of him. He's in the club then because he's on loan, isn't he? He's on loan, obviously, he's a still a Chelsea player. And, and if we, we get into the promised land, I'm in a great position at the minute. We'll be hoping to sign him. You know, will Chelsea let him go? Who knows? Well, for money, I'm sure they would. That, that they've got yeah, a, yeah. A, a, a load of riches. how well he plays from now to the end of the season, really. Because I mean, if Chelsea people are impressed with him, the, the, the price will go up. You know, you, you can't, you don't want him not to play well. No. But the better he plays, is going to make it a, a bigger price for the butter. Well, 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 the thing is that the, the bit, you're right. The, the better he plays, the more goals he scores from now to the end of the season. His price tag will begin up. And there'll be yeah, lots yeah. of envious size there. And if Chelsea don't want, I think there'll be more than Middlesbrough want his signature. Yeah. I think well, that's the thing a is, Bernie, the rewards for getting into that Premiership are tremendous. Me. Oh, unbelievable. I just hope the club realises that. You know, they do. Of course you they know, do. If they pull out, you know, it's, it's a lot of money, but hey, mate, you get your money back plenty of times, don't Without you? Without a doubt. You but, know? but Frank, I mean, it, you, you, you've you've phoned and you have you have a go when need be and you praise me. But start of the season, there was a statement intent. There was players brought in. We did get the likes of Bamford and whatever on loan from Chelsea. Then we extended yeah. it. There has been a statement of intent from day one. Other seasons gone by. I would look start the season think I'm not for it. I don't fancy it. This mm, season, mm. I have hand in heart thought, hey, we've got a good beefed up squad. We will be competing. Top six, I'm confident. But at the minute, hey, we're in a great position to go all the way and, and finish automatically. Yeah. But obviously, not in fortune. You still need that bit of luck and rubber the green. You still yeah, need that. Yeah, it's, it's down to the down to the players. You know, as I say, look look at the uh, some of the games coming up in April, and there's some tough there's some tough cookies there. Oh, there is. You know, banana skins are yeah. all around them. But yeah. they better go out there if they play with that confidence. Not just careless, good confidence, and they go out there thinking they can win that title, and they yeah. want to win it. They play with passion, they play with you know guts, gutsy games, mm -hmm. you know, and, and claw the games out. That's what they've got to be prepared to do. It yeah. won't be easy for them. Mm -hmm. And if they can get themselves in the right frame of mind for the last six, seven games, could be in, it could be automatic spot. Yeah, and, and I keep saying it, Frank, it'd be great for the town, great for the economy, great for the people. I love going to Glasgow. When I go and see my mother, I love people coming up and saying, hey, your team doing well, the borough top of the league. I love all that. You know, rather than yeah, going up there and saying, yeah. oh, you've been relegated again and you're there for life, the use lot, and it's great. Everybody's buzzing, you know, and yeah, it's, it's just everybody's in a feel-good factor at the minute. And, and obviously, the games are running out and we're still sitting pretty, so... We just need to hope. Still up there. You, you, you can't. You can't fault them, can you? I mean, no. there was that hiccup there a couple of weeks ago. There was. There was. Bit of a splutter, you know. It looked bad, you know. Things weren't going right, but they pulled out of that. Of uh, maybe it's the talk of bringing in another striker has uh, shook the strikers up a little bit yeah. for the psychology. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I mean, maybe they do need strengthening. Maybe you know, I, I don't just mean if they go to the Premiership. I mean, even now it is. You can never have too big a squad, can you? With quality, you always need somebody there who can. Uh, all the other players are looking yeah. over the shoulder yeah. that if they know if they don't start and pull, pull it pull it out they're, uh, they're going to get replaced you know and Crank mm -hmm. is the man to do it but 
Playing them in the right positions, Bernie. That's the key for me. You're onto a winner. Yeah, and he's not making so many changes. Tonight there was two, but he's not making wholesome changes. You know, Tomlin was on the left, yeah, yeah. Woodgate was in there, a yard well, was out. I know you've said it, and callers have said it about, you know, yeah. confidence and yeah. knowing where you stand. You play yeah. well, there's no reason to drop players. You yeah. know, yeah. if they're doing the business on the pitch, reward yeah. them by giving them the yeah. next game. Yeah. Don't, don't uh, let them play well for you and then drop them for no other reason than yeah. it's a rotational system. <clears throat> no, it's, uh, it's going well, Ben. Everybody's going to be pretty chuffed if they go up. I think the town will explode, won't they? I think you're right, Frank. I think Max you're right. celebrations. Hey, great. Even I might have a tipple. No. You might have a what? A tipple. It's a joke, Frank. I won't be having a tipple. <laughs> Frank, listen, thank you very much for your call. Staying up late. I'm, I'm apologies for being Catch late. Later. Cheers, thank you very much. And, and just apologies uh, for being late, if you're thinking. I was meant to be on at 10-ish. Apologies. Uh, I was through in Harrogate, watching Dodgy TV. Rush to get here. Uh, Scotch Corner, load of traffic, then diversion, nightmare. But anyway, we're here, and thanks to the cause for staying up late and, and getting involved. If you want to watch us on YouTube, you can watch us on YouTube. Uh, and if you're listening, well, thank you very much. And thanks to CVFM, as always, obviously, for allowing me in here. And Healthy Living Pharmacies for sponsoring the show. Uh, Give us a call, 01642 688104. Your local station for Middlesbrough, CVFM. Bernie Does the Borough, proudly sponsored by Teesside's Healthy Living Pharmacies. There's always a pharmacy open near you seven days a week. Ask your local pharmacist for free and confidential advice on smoking, alcohol, weight and sexual health issues. You don't even need an appointment. Visit teessidepharmacy.net to find out more. Bernie's back and he's now on CVFM. It's Bernie Does the Borough. And if you want to get involved there, your views are on 642-688-104. Unlike I put in the Twitter earlier, I put the wrong number. So wait, it's got me. Uh, 01642-688-104. Give us a phone. Discuss Middlesbrough. We're still up there fighting. Great result tonight. Patrick Bamford, another smashing goal from him. He is playing up the middle now. He's looking comfortable. He's looking composed. And uh, he looks as if he's wanting to hit that 20 mark and doing very well at the minute. Oh, and 104 let's go to John. Hiya, John. No, mate, how are you doing? Come on in, John. <laughs> hey, I bet you can swing a flag for it tonight, John. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you could swing two flags from it, <laughs> Bernie. I'm, I'm hyper. Hey, I'm absolutely brilliant. hyper. Great but result. not as hyper as the bloke that I rang the phone number you put on Twitter, mate. Did you, you didn't ring the wrong number, John, I, I did. did. I go did, on. and this, this guy went, hello. And I thought, oh, Bernie, you know, he's, he's not full of him and vigour like he should be. <laughs> I said, can I, can I talk to Bernie? He went, Bernie, oh. I said, uh, is that CVFM? He went, no, mate, I'm in bed. So, uh, I'll tell you, anyway, I told him the borough had won. I was excited <laughs> and what have you, so. so I, Here, yeah. John, it could have been worse. He could have went, hold on, mate, I'll put you on the Bernie. <laughs> 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 oh, John, man. I bet, he, I bet he's tweeted out of his bloody Wednesday <laughs> now, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, John, great result. I mean, were you a wee bit concerned about tonight? Or were you happy I after was, Saturday? I was. I must admit, Bernie, right. I'm thinking it's a big game. Yeah. Uh, especially after Saturday, I'm thinking good performance. Yeah. You know, we need another one. Mm -hmm. And, wow, hey, fantastic. Yeah. Because yeah. that was one where you were to dig in and scrap Bernie. Yeah. And we traded him toe to toe. And, and, you know, as I say, St. Patrick's Day, Bamford, oh, he, was, right, it, he was like all scripted for him to score. Hey, you're dead it, right? right, I have to say, happy, well, St. Patrick's Day, happy St. Patrick's Day, because it is St. Patrick's Day today, Patrick Bamford got the goal, and all my friends and relations, hey, there's Irishmen, all over the people, all over the place, John, so, yeah, exactly. happy St. Patrick's Day to them, yeah. Fantastic, So, fantastic. so John, we, uh, obviously it was great that Bamford's up the middle, he's, yeah, look, we know he does a job on the right, but he's more effective up the middle, isn't he? Hey. On, he's on fire, Bernie. Yeah, he and is, them, he is. them goals he scored the weekend. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, I don't want to make you blush, mate, but no. you know, he, it was it was you in your prime, Bernie. He's very yeah, composed. You know, he is composed and cool. Looking for it yeah, and yeah, feet and yeah, putting them away. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. And he must stay. Do you think Karanka will keep him there for the remaining games now, John? I'm sure he will. I, I, I think I, he will. To be yeah. honest, Bernie, I know I listened to your previous calls and they're saying about. He's not tinkering as much. Yeah. I think he's had his fingers burnt when he's been, you know, when he dropped George Friend, when he yeah, dropped Ledbetter. Led, uh, yeah. And I think 
he's he's realised now and it's enforced changes that he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I think he'll give Patrick the run up front, you know, because the lad's doing the job, Mm -hmm. he's proved he can do it. So let him let him go. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So John, what about Tomlin? Were you a bit surprised he was he was on the left tonight? I mean obviously Adam Woods was on the bench. To be to be honest, Bernie, uh, I didn't think he would start. Um, right. But when I seen, you know, he'd, he'd put him in there, I thought, well, great. And obviously, he's one of them players, Bernie, where sometimes <laughs> it can be a luxury uh, in, a, in a scrapping match. Yeah. But, you know, threaded that ball through, created the goal. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's job, all, done, all it job done. That. What about Vossen's uh, effort? I mean, it was a. The keeper, I yeah. don't know, he, he was well at his goal, but it was some yeah. effort. It was it was cracking. If yeah. only if only the, the other know. side of the post made and went dead. So, but he's been shown more spark as well, Bernie. You know, it was I thought he was a bit, a little bit light and pushed off yeah. the ball and what have you. But he's he's, he's done all right. Yeah, tonight he's tonight he was longer. tonight he was good. But Saturday he was a wee bit subdued, John. But again, yeah. he's been in and out of the team, and it's difficult to get that run and momentum going, and you know that confidence. The yeah. more you play, yeah. the more confident you become. Well, I, and the better yeah. you become, you know. So, but well, I, um, I, I, defensively, I, I, I John, just think we're hitting hitting the gears at yeah. the right time, Bernie. I agree you with know, that as well. We haven't, John, we haven't yeah. peaked too soon. No. We've had a couple of splutters, yeah. but that that was a big result tonight. And obviously, Bournemouth getting the draw as well, Bernie. Yes. So, yeah. You know, it just yeah. sets it up lovely for the weekend's game, John. Early oh. kick off on the television. Yeah. Big contingent from Middlesbrough going down. It's going to be a smashing, a smashing oh, game, isn't it? it? Brilliant, mm. absolutely brilliant. And the thing is, they've got nothing to fear, Bernie. They need to just go there and get about them, set yeah. about them. You know, like when we went to Manchester City, just just go for it. Let's 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 give it our best. And, shot. and I, I I agree with you, John. You know, we we went to Sheffield Wednesday. We were cautious. We yeah. changed things around. We changed the system. Changed clientele. We don't have to change anything. No. we're Middlesbrough. We're exactly. up the top merit. We yeah. go and let them worry about us more than we worry about them. So right, just go. So right, give them the fear. Yeah, we yeah. don't need the fear factor. We've we've got that. Just go and play our game, yeah. and uh, hopefully we'll get a result, mate. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, as I say, John, I'm. You know, the last two games, I, brilliant. Couldn't ask for any more. Yeah. And Saturday, let's have another. Don't yeah. get beat. Don't get beat. Some people yeah. are saying a draw would have been fine tonight. Yeah. I was wanting the victory. We got the victory. I wasn't want to draw tonight. They're in a, a oh. difficult run at the minute. The the strikers are injured. McLaren's moaning and groaning. Yeah. Um, but great he result. Wasn't green for St Patrick's Day tonight, like was he? Uh, yeah, you're right. I tell you what, John. John, I was listening when I was dashing here and yeah. I was stuck in traffic. I had the national radio on. McLaren's right. interview. He used the word magnificent, John. Dabby yeah, were yeah, magnificent. Yeah. Oh, sweet. He, he mentioned it twice. Magnificent. <laughs> Talking about those, presumably. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But he's still got that permanent smile. I was hoping to wipe it off his face tonight, but he's still got it, John. Yeah, he'd be he'd be he'd be going up and down the Armai Street with a green face tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Hey, John, you're there Friday, aren't you? Oh, well, aye, I'm I'm busy ironing my cover bund. Hey, you, you better have some decent clobber on. I've told you, if you get some dodgy gear on, you don't get in. Oh, dear you God, right, <laughs> okay then, I'll, I'll make an exception for you then, Matt. I look forward to seeing you Friday, John, thanks for your Lovely. call. Lovely, it's always a pleasure, Matt. Cheers, John, Speak thank you, yourself. cheers. Cheers, Bernie, bye, mate. Uh, 01642 we're not going to into a break I'm just giving you a number 01642 688104 that's the correct number unlike the one John phoned and the guy was in his bed Um yeah this Friday I've got a do celebrating 30 years in Teesside it's at the Riverside there's a host of players come I think it's 10 in total uh, there's Curtis Fleming there's Graham Kavner there's Jim Platt there's Craig Hignett uh, Paul Proudlock remember Paul Proudlock um, David Hodgson Stevie Vickers so there's a host of players coming. Uh, we've sold a lot of tickets. Should be a good night. Well, a bit of crack. Things you can't see in there for obvious reasons. And and I'll be telling a few stories. And the players will be able to ask him some questions as well. Um, but tonight it's all about Middlesbrough. We're still sitting pretty. We'll beat Derby County on their own tough. One goal to nil thanks to a 64th minute Patrick Bamford goal. He went through and goal. Rounded the keeper an acute angle. Uh, finished it off. And that was enough to take all three points. And we're sitting very pretty. Uh, joint top. And obviously this Saturday, we've got another big game, Bournemouth away. And hopefully we can go there and do the business. Uh, if you want to give us a phone, 01642 
Maybe we're not going into the break, so I'll crack on. Um, if you've just walked in the door again, these, these guys have fell asleep behind here. Um, I'll go through the results again. Uh, Blackburn Rovers 2. Oh, hold on a minute. The buzzers went. Ian's in the line. Hi, Ian. I was just going to... What the blinky hell? <laughs> hey, if that's Ian, he's on the... Yeah, okay. It was a recording of Ian's phone. Ian, you're scrubbed. You're not coming on the night. I'll tell you what, I'll go through them after the break. 01642 608 104. Your local station for Middlesbrough, CVFM. Bernie Does the Borough, proudly sponsored by Teesside's Healthy Living Pharmacies. There's always a pharmacy open near you seven days a week. Ask your local pharmacists for free and confidential advice on smoking, alcohol, weight and sexual health issues. You don't even need an appointment. Visit TeessidePharmacy.net to find out more. Bernie tells it as it is, with no bull****. Bernie Does the Borough on CVFM. And if you want to get involved, there, you've used 01642 uh, Thanks for staying up late. Obviously, it's a late, what was it? It's a late game, wasn't it? It was a night game. And thanks to everybody for, for phoning in. 01642 We're going to go. I'm, I'm looking here. Maka, the Sunderland fan on the Borough phone in. Good evening, Maka. Good evening. Maka, are you lining your kips on, on the phone? I'm, I am relaxing, yes. I'm well, relaxing. Okay, then. Uh, there's nobody sharing the bed with you, Maka, is there? No, that's not, no. Okay, Maka, come on. I want, you, I want your total concentration, Maka. Come on then. I know, I know you're a Sunderland fan, Maka, and, and anybody that doesn't know Maka, Maka travels the country watching Sunderland, Hibernian, Scotland. He's a massive football yeah. fan. He takes an interest yeah. in North East football and he phoned the Legend Show for years when it was on. So go on then, Maka. What about the Borough I result, could... first of all? Uh, what about it? Oh, <laughs> come on, you must, you must think that was a great result. Yeah, it was a good result for you. Um, obviously, looks like he's coming up, and it would be good to see he's up there. Ho- hopefully, we'll stay up. Um, as I was saying on Facebook, I'm um, hoping that we stay up. I can play his next season because I miss playing his. You know, I, like you say, I go all over with Sunderland and Tibbs, yeah. and, and I miss going to Riverside. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, did you see? Yeah. Um, did you see? As a fellow Sunderland fan, did you see Brian's tweet today? He says, uh, Bernie. If you see, if you, if Big Dick gets the uh, Sunderland job, just to let you know, is it me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously Big Advocate's got the job, former Rangers, he's been around and uh, he did very yeah, well. Yeah, we'll as well. As well. Does yeah. he excite you as a Sunderland fan? Uh, I know it's about a phone, but just talk North East football. Does he excite you, Dick Advocate? Um, not really. Um, to be honest, it just, I guess, believe how... We, well, he's got the job because he's a friend of a friend, isn't he? And you know, is that right? Is it? Is he a friend of a friend? Yeah, he says he knows uh, a guy called Frank oh, Barnes or what, something. Frank and phones it, it, Frank and phones no, his job. No, no, not Frank, not that Frank. Right, um, yeah. he, a, a Frank that was involved with Chelsea, and we've got Lee Congleton, who is the director of football at Sunderland, who okay. used to be director of Chelsea. Okay. So he, so that's how that came about. But I came on to promote. Um, an event on Friday night, if you don't mind me uh, promoting it. Go on then, Maka. It's a good friend of mine, yourself, obviously. Um, good you've friend. got here 30 years of T side. 30 years old. Uh, How old and, uh, and obviously, I'm a massive, massive Sunderland and Hibs fan, you know, and I'm yeah. going to West Ham and Hibs Rangers this weekend. Mm-hmm. But I'm coming down to the event on Friday because obviously, you're someone I've got a lot of respect for. Thank you, Maka. Um, and I don't mind saying that, even though you, you know, you're a Borough fan through and through. And even that. though I scored a boatload against Sunderland over the years. Well, yes, I know. <laughs> I've been YouTubing. I've yeah, been yeah. YouTubing. Yeah. You scored the fastest goal, didn't you? Quickest goal, 17 seconds yeah. against your long backer. Yeah, yeah. My yeah, granny yeah. could have scored it. Could have missed it, really. But you're somebody, I, you know, you're someone I've got a lot of time for, and you're you're a really nice gentleman. And and I think you, if man. anyone listening, really, um, they should come along on Friday. There's still tickets left, I believe. Well, there's like, no many left, my up, but There's a great crowd coming, and uh, I'm very yeah. grateful and thankful to the people who's turned up. I hope we have a great yeah. night, and we'll have a bit of fun, Marker. Well, that's it. It's probably more on probably more in on Friday than you get in on a match day. Oh, Marker, don't be saying that. The Borough fans are going to yeah. droves, aren't you? They'll be wanting to know your address. <laughs> don't be saying that. <laughs> you just gone and no, spoiled it, it. it. It should be a good night, and you get a meal, and like there's ex-players coming, isn't there? So, yeah, there's, there's or, you know, and one. obviously you get the you get to hear a question and answer session with. Hey, with Bernie Marcia, and, I I would dodge the Sunderland fans to come along with yourself, and and they can have a look at the trophy cabinet, 
and see the Cannon Cup, a modern day trophy, what it looks like. And Newcastle fans, why don't you come down? You know, you, you can yeah. stay for 10 minutes, see the cup and head off. I'll get the Carlin Cup out of the cabinet, I'm sure he's it. You can touch it. But it's the fresh air, you see. I'm, I'm having to do, you know, sort my, try and sort my lungs out before, you know. Oh, your lungs will be knackered when you come down here, mate. Oh, oh, once that smoke hits you, boy. Yeah, no oh, nightmare. But, but like, obviously, but, you know, you, I've been a load of question and answer sessions with yourself and obviously the other legends and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's really good, you know, you really do find out some things. So if you've never been before, um, I'd urge you to snap up the remaining tickets and uh, mm. and get yourself along to the riverside. Marky, you won't be wearing your Sunderland. You won't be wearing your Sunderland strip, will you? No, I won't wear my oh, Sunderland strip. Well, I, 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 you know, I, I know you've only seen a bit of quality now and again. So you've seen that last time, didn't you? So mm. that pub in Middlesbrough. So no, I'll not, I'll not wear it this time. So Mark, t- t- tell, tell the people, you know, how, how did you get into football? You know. For, for those that don't know, I, I know your disabilities, you're blind, yeah. you're a great lad, yeah. you're as knowledgeable as anybody I know out there about football, because you're a clever lad. Tell us a bit about that. I, f- I find that um, interesting, intriguing, and the people listening will be able to say, well, I'll tell you what, that might have some boy. Go on. Well, I got into football, um, like, my mum and dad have some supporters, and they've had season tickets, right. and I just got a season ticket when I was younger, and started going to home matches, and then... I went to school in Edinburgh and started following Hibs during the, like, on midweek matches mm-hmm. and d- decided when I left school well, I was going to get a season ticket and then I met like friends through friends and then started going to the away matches and right. started going to some of the away matches and haven't really looked back and then t- I bought a season pack for the Tartan Army like to be a member of the Tartan Army Where did the Scotland thing come from? Surely your parents don't support Scotland no, they don't. They're English, right? And they're England fans. But I don't, I don't support England at anything because they just ruin everything like the press. And um, they're just big England up all the time, and it just spoils your enjoyment. Whereas Scotland, you don't really expect anything. And obviously, under Gordon Strachan, you don't know what I'm on about, like mm-hmm. and, and with all, you know, it's just fun supporting Scotland. You have a yeah. laugh and a sing song and. Right. Um, there's a lot of English people support Scotland and go to matches and stuff. Micah, you know? d- just tell me, Scotland fan, have you ever tried putting the old kilt on with a sporran oh God. and no, tossing I the cable? No, no, have I you ever tried any of that, lad? No. I've tried the bad pipes, but I've never tried the kilt. Hey, have you ever tried tossing the cable? <laughs> not, no. <laughs> and uh, for those that are interested, there is a YouTube documentary that was made about it. Myself, if you go to Google and you put in blind faith okay. dot, M- dot mov, you'll be able to watch that, and it's just it just documenting you know, how I go around the country and stuff. But I don't really see it any different. I just sort of like just get on with it, and you know wherever Sunderland or Hibs are, and Scotland like are playing at home and stuff, I'll I'll be there. You know, I've not got a passport, so I don't go abroad. But <laughs> I've been to I've been to the last two Scotland away matches when they played England, so and Brazil at the Emirates as well. So, Mike, my, 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 when you say you don't have a passport, I sort of laughed. At have you not got a passport? No, no, I haven't. Is that because you don't I, want to get the country? I used to. You don't I used fancy to. holidays these days. You don't. You don't fancy going abroad. No, I'm no. happy being in Britain. There's a lot of good things right. you can do in Britain, and my team can never get to Europe. So, well, that, that's you know. true, Michael. That, that's very true. Hibs and Sunderland, ah. no chance of going to Europe. Well, Hibs have got a good manager on Dallin Stubbs, and Rangers dropped points again tonight. So, oh, did what did what was the score tonight with Rangers, Michael? Two with Alloa. Dear me. Then we play Rangers on Sunday, so we could go nine points ahead of them. So. Oh dear. Um, Mike, Mike it, get, get, get back to um, what was the story? What game was it? I don't know if it was you or your friend. Somebody took a dog mm-hmm. into the game. What game was it? Tell us about that. QPR away um, a couple of years ago. It was a midweek game and Sunland won. 3-4-2, I think it was, or 3-2. Right. And there was a guy called Billy who, who was from... Um, a, a branch, uh, Bishop Portland branch, and he took his dog Jarvis into the ground, and Jarvis is just a pet dog, yeah. not a guide dog. Right. Um, and he just was sw- swinging it. He's like a spaniel. He was swinging him about when we scored and stuff like that. Well, no, no, cr- no, in a cruel way. No, no, no. no, no. And, he, and he used to take him to every game and stuff like that. Every away game. Um, so did he pretend? Was he? Why? How did he get a dog in? But. Um, 
I don't know. Sometimes he had to pretend it was his guide dog. I know at Hibs, when we played Hibs in a friendly pre-season, he had to pretend it was, it was his guide dog. Yeah, other grounds just, um, other grounds just let him in, and some of the pubs were going to, they put like a bowl of water out for him and stuff. And right. Yeah, you know, he's good, he's good crack. It's, it's like you say, following someone in that away from home, it's just, it's special. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd, I'd sooner play away than be at home every week, I would. Right. Right. You know, uh, I, I, I chose to go to Cowden Beef over Aston Villa on Saturday at home, and just yeah. because it was a home match, you know. Right. I right. don't. I, I prefer away game to get the loyal fans going, and Villa fans will know that. Like you get good travelling support, like yeah. the away games. And did, did the fans? You know, did the fans have a sing song then, Michael, on the way? Is there a sing yes, song on the, the bus? Not. Yeah. Yeah. All the time, and that's what I like about it. You know right. what I mean? I can, I can be myself. I don't have to be the one with a disability. I can, you know. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I like about coming to your night and that. You know what I mean? And coming to your events and stuff like that. I mean, it, there's all obviously all Borough fans that yeah. go there, but there's a lot of banter, and it, it's good crack. And you know, I, I like having chats with the Borough yeah. fans and that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, Mark, so do, do you want? When it comes to it, I like to beat you, obviously. I know you do, Maka. Listen, do you want to uh, give us a song before you go? What's your latest song, Maka? You're good at the sing songs. Go on. Give us <laughs> a, a footballing theme. You can give us a Scottish I, one if you want, Rana Sunland. <laughs> hey, St. Patrick's Day, you know any Irish ones? Uh, I don't actually know do any Irish know? ones. I'm not singing the song about Jim Platt. Um, <laughs> I, I'll, give, I'll give you a, a bit of Bob Marley. Bob Marley, um, go for it. I like Bob Marley. <laughs> well, German, go on. Woke up this morning. Sing along, Benny. I went. I, go. Is it the, the genuine words are you adding your own? Words? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just genuine words. Genuine words. No, I want to hear football words. Outside my doorstep, singing sweet song, melody pure and true. Hey, good day, my. This is my message to you. Singing, don't worry. Are oh, you sing, singing this to the Sunderland fans? Yeah. Oh, I right, I been. get it now. I get why you picked that. Okay, Sunland AFC, it's going to be all right. You <laughs> hope so, Maka. Yeah. Hey, good on you, Maka. Listen, well done. I look forward to your company on Friday. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for letting me on the show. Maka, what's this in the background? Have you, you got another bit of music on there? I am hearing your bit of music, yeah. I have a good song, that. It's a whistler. Listen, it's thank you very much for your call. Cheers, mate. See you, see you Friday. Friday. See you, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers. Uh, and if you want to get involved, obviously run out of time. We'll try and squeeze another comment on 01642 678 104. Your local station for Middlesbrough, CVFM. Bernie Does the Borough, proudly sponsored by Teesside's Healthy Living Pharmacies. There's always a pharmacy open near you seven days a week. Ask your local pharmacist for free and confidential advice on smoking, alcohol, weight and sexual health issues. You don't even need an appointment. Visit TeessidePharmacy.net to find out more. Have your say on the match. Unedited, Bernie Does the Borough on CVFM. And uh, welcome back, 0164. See that? Honestly, I'm chucking that. I'm really chucking that. 0164 104. Give us a phone. Anybody, any headphones out there, give me them. Um, let's go to Bandy. Hiya, Bandy. Yeah, good evening. Bandy, listen, I'm going to tell the people I was with you watching a bit of dodgy TV, watching the border. We were celebrating our. Well, having a cup of tea in the bottom mugs or whatever when I left your home in Harrogate <laughs> I had a nightmare journey yep. getting back and I was half an hour late for the show right right and that was but your fault you've seen, you've seen the goal though yeah you've seen Bamford's finish great finish great yeah, finish mate. What, it's, it's just come on again now it's on Sky Sports yeah. News now so I'm just, uh, just watching the highlights yeah unbelievable finish so what an assist from Tom and what a finish he sort of took it around the peak on his left foot and he, he hit it in the same movement. Yeah, it was but a bit of an angle. It in. Yeah, yeah, it was a great finish. A fantastic goal and a fully deserved win. You know, we, we, were, we were watching and it was a, a, a sterling rear guard performance. Uh, would go absolutely immense. Colossus, you know, yeah, he's just... Steady of the week. Yeah. Even if... Uh, it was against Blackpool, wasn't it? He, he was fantastic. Yeah, he got himself a goal. In his first game in God knows how many months, mm -hmm. and he's just slotted straight in. And um, if we can keep this lad fit, he's the experience that might just see us over the line. I mean, you um, you, you do see Bandy, you you do see a calmness in the in the defence when he's involved, don't you? We've not seen that calmness yeah, for a while. Of I mean, it, 
his head's almost magnetised to the ball. You yeah. know, he's, he just reads the play so well. Yeah. He's, uh, he's a good leader. Mm-hmm. He, he talks to players. He just pushes them to the side, tells them to take one step left, one step right. He's just an organiser. Mm-hmm. Um, and he knows what it means to the supporters as well. So he's, he's a very good calm assurance at the back. And he's bringing out the best in the others. Um, obviously, particularly Ben Gibson. I mean, to have two, two ball lads in, in your, your defensive partnership. That's great, isn't it? Uh, there's no, there's no lot of teams one can say that. And one one lad just, just, just learning the ropes who's going to be a fantastic player. Yeah. There's, no lot, good, there's no lot of teams can boast that, Bandy. There's no lot of teams can boast that. They've got two central defenders that's local lads, you know. We've got Woodgate and Gibson, fantastic. What about Bamford, Bandy? I mean, um, we know he's played right a lot this season. He's got 16 goals. His target is 20. You know, he can definitely make it because he's in a rich vein of form. But uh, do you think Karankar will stick to playing him up the middle now? Surely he will. Oh, you Probably not. No, I okay. think he'll look, he'll look at the opposition and then he'll think, where can I utilise him best? Sometimes he's not suited up the middle. Sometimes oh. he is actually better. Coming Bandy, when you're right scoring goals, when you're scoring goals, but, that's where you should play up the middle. He's banging form. He showed all the credentials tonight again and on Saturday. Cool, composed, Agreed. picky spot. Uh, he, he's looking he looks refreshed and revitalised he looks as if he's a massive boost coming in off the wing now up the middle he's, he's more or less saying hey I'm delighted yeah, here he, I want to he, stay here he came out on record and actually stated that he does prefer to play up front but he's, he's one of these grounded individuals who will, who will play anywhere mm-hmm. um, but you know if you, if you ask him where he wants to play he would be up front and I'll that's front. where he yeah, thinks he can get the most goals yeah. but I just think he's intelligent he's never just left right or centre I don't think it matters too much because mm-hmm. we've got that much that much talent he makes intelligent runs and he's not buzzing in behind him yeah. he'll be along and he'll, he'll find you so I don't think we need to be too much. We need to be a bit more flexible up front and uh, just have players winning the mock. And we've, we've certainly got the talent. Um, again, when Boston plays, he's a similar sort of player. Mm-hmm. He finds them little holes, little pocket areas. Great so effort for Boston, Bandy. When he hit the post, it was some he effort, was wasn't it? You know, he's, he's just got it go underneath it. He sort of punted it mm-hmm. in the hope that it would go in, but it's just hit, hit, hit the, uh, the, the right hand right post. Right, yeah. Unlucky. You know, it would have been a wonder goal. Just, just for sure, you know. Um, Endeavour really to try and to try and score a goal from there. It just shows what an intelligent player he is. What about Tomlin but on the left? Intelligence, intelligence all through the team. Tomlin. Tomlin on the left tonight. Obviously, Reach was on, on uh, demoted on the bench, arrested, whatever terminology you want to use. But are we surprised Tomlin on the left? He's not played a lot of games out there, um, has he? Not really, no, because he's, he's he's picked a fantastic pass out. You know, oh, he has, he's yeah. He's actually come in slightly. Yeah, mm-hmm. from the left side, and he's Bamford's made a sort of run across, yeah. and he's just, he's just made him in. A messy style assist. When you look mm-hmm. at it, it's just, it's frightening how good that goal is. Yeah. If a, a, a world class team scores that goal, everybody will be saying, wow, this team mean business. But yeah. what a statement tonight to go there and win. And by all accounts, we, we, we thoroughly deserved it. Frustrated them. We sat deep, and when mm-hmm. we counted attack, we did it well. So mm-hmm. we were unlucky. And they were just getting frustrated, resorting to, to long range shots, which was giving them up all day long. So, as I say, Bandy, um, b- before Saturday, you know, we play Ipswich, we score four, we score one tonight, two games, five goals, six points on the board. Hey, you know, it's it's dreamland, that's exactly what we wanted, brilliant. wasn't it's it? It's one of your wildest dreams, really, considering how cool we were at Notts Forest. Yeah. Someone said, look, you'll have six points in the next two games. You'd think, yeah, right. And, you, know, <laughs> you just didn't think it would happen. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you've done it. And that's, that's the, the, the test of the character of the team. Every time we've had a, a setback, we've, we've bounced straight back. Mm-hmm. So that's why I've never been too phased or got too carried away if things don't go so well. You know, we lost at Sheffield, who were dreadful. Worst performance I've seen. Yeah, he says that, time. Bandy, yeah. yeah we, we bounced back quickly with a win. Thankfully, mm-hmm. there's that many games in this league that you don't get too much opportunity here to sit and feel sorry for yourself. You've got mm-hmm. to get, get going again straight away yeah. and get some points on the board and, and cancel out them bad defeats. Yeah. And we've done that all season, to be fair. And that's, that's testament to the manager. He doesn't panic. You know, I, I, I heard his interview tonight and, you know, he, he was, you can see he's pleased, but, you know, he's, he's thinking about Bournemouth now. Let's yeah. forget about this now. Job done. Points on the board. We have to go to Bournemouth now. And I think he'll have a look at it. In uh, detail and work out a plan to try and to try and stifle them. Yeah. The point with a good Saturday, 
can get through, do you know? You are in the You know, I'm just looking at the table there, uh, Watford again, you know, the the they're a tough side, you know, they're sat top now on the same points as us, so yeah. we've got to go there, so that one's gonna be <laughs> absolutely vital really. But if we can avoid defeat, you know, in, in games and pick up points against mm -hmm. the team that we should be, you know, we've got Wigan to play, we've got Brighton, we've got Fulham, so you know, we're in some kind of way, there's another nine points possibly. So add that on to what we've got now and that takes us up into the eighteens. So you're still so, super uh, confident, Bandy? You're still super confident we can finish in the top two? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've said it from the start. Like I said, last season I saw um, I saw evidence of a good side. This mm -hmm. season I'm seeing the, the, the development of a great side, a really, really strong side. I believe if we get up, then I don't think we'd have too many problems staying up. I'm not saying we would, we'd set the premiership or like that. I think we'd be, we'd be comfortably top of the, the bottom half just floating around in the table with the capabilities of pushing on with some strong investment. Bandy! Yeah, if, if, if you keep hold of Itar Karanka, we have got an absolute gem. We really have. Bandy, thank, thank you very much for your call. Out. Listen, thank you very much for your call. Thank you for your hospitality tonight. Apologies for good being... Good penalty shoot out earlier, wasn't it? It was a good penalty <laughs> shoot, but I was just telling the lads here at CBFM, one of the neighbours chapped the door and complained, that's Harrogate for you, you see. Come to the borough. You can do what you want. See you later, Bandy. Thank you very much. See you later. Uh, thanks for joining Good us. Uh, and obviously, we'll be back. Am I back Saturday? I'll let you know. Uh, keep looking at the Twitter and the Facebook. 01642 8104. That's the number. It's always here on CBFM. Middlesbrough, one goal to nil tonight against Derby County. Uh, Patrick Bamford scored the goal in the 64th minute. He rounded the keeper. A cut angle. Finished it off. Thanks for joining us. Bernie does the borough. This show has been an independent production on CVFM.